you know, it's, it's tricky these days to pin down a certain concise definition because there's lots of, which is great, there's been lots of development and research into learning differences. And I, a, a word that you hear more and more often is neurodiversity, right? So we're, we're all of us, we're all diverse in our neurological uh, wiring from one another, which is the beauty of just being a human being. Um, and I think, you know, when we say learning differences here and why River, um, it's, it's meant to understand that, yes, there are some real obstacles that our students have, whether it's with attention or language um, or emotional challenges. But at the same token, there are such great strengths and a diversity of strengths in our students. Um, we have students in the building who might be reading at a fourth grade level and we're working with them to remediate and provide the interventions necessary, but then you put them on our theater stage in a production of Wizard of, of Oz or something like that and it's like they've been on Broadway for years and you would never know that this is a student that is challenged with the language um, based difficulty. You know, or you have a student that uh, unfortunately had a lot of social challenges in the public school, might have been bullied or, or sort of singled out for their differences, but you just bring them to our school, just a safe space where people care and um, are non-judgmental, and that student just blossoms up. It just allows them to showcase those strengths. So yeah, I wouldn't say, obviously there are obstacles, but again, it, it's learning differences, not difficulties. Provide. Um, we have students at all these different levels and we have some students who we are working to provide them with multi-sensory phonemic um, instruction on that very sort of finite language level. And then other students may, again, may, may just need that support with the mechanics of the writing and the technical aspects of writing. So they're not mutually exclusive. Our approach, you know, we put a lot of emphasis on college-based writing here. It's one of the most, whether you're going into college or career and prepping your resume and cover letter, that's just so important. So there's a, there's a strong emphasis on um, writing readiness here at Y River. And um, certainly we incorporate any variety of tools to help students sort of meet that threshold for writing which a which a high school graduate should and that may mean some students use a speech to text software which is a, a great accessibility tool that you know many adults may use in the workplace and should use and that's one thing we try to do here is sometimes you know it's we work on those academic skill areas but at the same time it's about equipping students with the awareness self-awareness um, and the tools and the resources for them to kind of weigh on their own about and make a decision about what works best for me. There's certainly, especially for young adults, adolescents, there's a lot of tech literacy and media literacy that they need to be educated in during these years because technology can sometimes be very disruptive to a developing young adult. At, at the same time, yeah, we're, we're so fortunate that these tools are so readily available. I mean, there are pr free programs available to students who may need um, a, a reader, an audio reader that might have cost thousands of dollars to get a subscription to in the past. Um, and so it's amazing that that's accessible and it's so great that it's accessible. And to have options Again, with yeah. students that have come, might have come from schools where they've been stigmatized um, for their for their differences. Here, that is not something that's ever that they ever have to deal with. It's so great to kind of walk around the halls or at lunch. You overhear students making light of their of their differences. Oh, you know, owning it as a part of who they are as an individual, not shying away from it. Um, not being embarrassed um, by it, but you know, embracing it as a part of their character. And it's great because you have students here who are, who are more willing to take risk 
academically because they know that there's going to be someone there to catch them and they know there's going to be no judgment if they're not successful the first go around. So culturally, that's just really cool. This is an environment that's collaborative. It's very, um, you know, it feels like a family here. And the atmosphere is just one that, you know, I ha having worked in public schools, having worked with different populations, it's certainly a, a totally unique atmosphere. And part of that's because, you know, we're, we're 57 students, about 11 faculty members, and then a handful of administrators. So part of that's due to our size, um, but we've really tried to foster that, you know, culture. And um, I, I know it's why we have students come back from year to year and, and we have parents who are so appreciative of this. And it, it's just fantastic because, you know, high school, it's not just about math and reading and science. It's about socialization. And so